Hey, what's up, everybody, man? So the Cleveland Browns have been struggling to find a starting quarterback that has franchise potential for years, bro. We done ran into the um the Brady Quinns, the Colt McCoys, the Brian Hoyers, um, et cetera, et cetera, that we kind of thought could be our quarterback. And in reality, they just were not in. But Baker Mayfield, he just seemed different, you know, like. He came in, he got subbed in for the Jets game in 2018. He gave us that spark. You know, he was just balling, bro. And he ended up being a starter for the rest of the season. And, you know, he broke the rookie record with touchdowns, not even starting every game. The dude was out there balling, bro. He definitely displayed franchise potential. But then the sophomore season comes and he has a slump, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. But the reason why he had a slump in the first place is because, number one, he struggled reading defenses, and at times, they were faking him out weekly, and he was falling for the same shit. Number two, the decision-making was bad. On top of that, the pass protection was terrible, and then, you know, he just was he was just struggling trying to make things happen under pressure. Then on top of that, he was very, I'm not going to say very inaccurate, but he was definitely less accurate than he was the season before. He was also force feeding wide receivers. I don't know if he was overwhelmed by the fact that he had Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry on the same team, but at times he was definitely force feeding those guys, which was also bad for the team. And then on top of that, in general, he just tried to do too much, you know, at times and wasn't taking what the defense was giving him. And then the ultimate reason why this man struggled is because Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens was terrible, bro. The man had no football common sense. He ran a, a halfback draw on fourth and nine on national TV, trying to win a game in the second half, bro. The dude, like, he, he was garbage, bro. Everybody that watched the Browns play last year knows what I'm talking about. So, of course, he had an impact on the whole team, especially Baker Mayfield. But this season in general, bro, it is no excuses for Baker Mayfield because I forgot to mention on top of that that this man was cocky as shit last year. He was acting arrogant. I'm not going to be one of those guys that talk about always oh, in 50 commercials. The dude need his bread. But all I'm saying is I feel like he felt like he was that guy off his rookie season and he definitely got humble. So this season... The reason why I'm saying that there are no excuses for Baker Mayfield is because look at the team and what the Browns have done. They already know Freddie Kitchens was not it. That's why John Dorsey is not here because he tried to bring Freddie Kitchens back another year. We said, no, we not doing that, bro. Both of y'all can go. He left, Freddie Kitchens gone, and we brought in um, Kevin Stefanski. No, he has never been a head coach, but guess what? The man at least knows common sense football knowledge. And the dude at least knows how to call plays for his team, bro. Looking at what he did with Kirk Cousins, looking at what he did with Case Keenum in the past, looking at what he did with Nick, I mean with um Dalvin Cook and Adam Thielen. You know, I am not concerned about how he will make our offense look. So the Browns already took care of one problem for Baker Mayfield. Number two. The Browns had a terrible pass protection last year, especially both sides of the tackle. So guess what? We went out there, drafted the most polished tackle out there, Jedrick Wills, so he can make a smooth transition to a left tackle. At this point, anybody is better than what we had these last two years, so I'm sure Jedrick Wills will be fine, bro. On top of that... The Browns made sure they went out there and spent the bag on Jack Conklin to play the right tackle, who was the best tackle on the free agency market. We already got Batonio and Treader at center and left guard, who are solid starters. So our only concern, but really not a concern, is right guard, because you can just stuff a fat dude right at right guard if everything else is set in place, and we'll be cool. You feel me? So the offensive line is taken care of, bro. And then on top of that, just to make sure Baker Mayfield don't be crying or struggling about the blocking, we went out there and signed a fullback, bro. So if the offensive line is struggling, they go throw a fullback in to help out Baker Mayfield and even Nick Chubb, who doesn't really need the assistance at all. On top of that, speaking on Nick Chubb, we already got Nick Chubb, who was second 
in rushing yards last year without even getting the ball when he needed to get the ball, bro. On top of that, they made sure they brought back Kareem Hunt. So let's say Nick Chubb gets hurt. Kareem Hunt can come in and he can have a thousand yard season as well. Kareem Hunt, in general, will be a great second um, running back to Nick Chubb. They complement each other very well. If Freddie Kitchens was able to make them complement each other, anybody can do it, bro. Then you look at the tight end position. We got to upgrade our tight end. Najoku, yes, he had potential. Yes, he had his moments. But to be realistic, David Njoku is not that good, bro. Yes, he made catches, but sometimes he be dropping easy catches, bro. He can't block. So, since Baker Mayfield was struggling with blocking in general, and we're going to be running double tight end sets, they brought in Austin Hooper to help out and give Baker Mayfield another weapon, bro. And then we're not even going to talk about the wide receiver position because we already got Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry. We brought Hollywood Higgins back. We drafted Donovan People Jones. He's going to have options in the passing game. So there's no excuses this season for this man to fail. If this man fails this year, he asks, bro. It's, it's just that simple. If Baker Mayfield does not produce this year, he's trash. Straight up. Kevin Stefanski. If he does not find a way to make this offense work, he's trash. Straight up. Ain't no team out there built like this, bro. Ain't no team out there loaded like this, bro. Let's be real. Ain't no team loaded like this. So, like I said, one more time. If Baker Mayfield and Kevin Stefanski end up being trash next year, they're fucking trash, bro. But that's how I feel. Also, I need everybody to go ahead and check out my man's RZFL Sports. He made a video about the Browns and how we will make the playoffs just like we should have made the playoffs last year. Go on ahead, check the video out. It's a good video, man. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I got some more content coming soon.